uh, give me your attention this morning. Take your Bible, turn to Proverbs chapter number 6, please. And uh, we'll look here at some scripture here. It's been on my heart for a good while now. And this morning, I'll bring the message that I feel like the Lord's laid on my heart. It's going to be very, very extremely serious today. What I'm preaching on this morning is a matter of life and death, an eternal life and eternal death. And I don't know how to be no more serious or sincere than what I'm going to be this morning. And I need you to pray the Holy Spirit of God will take these words and settle this crowd and, and get in there this morning and speak to hearts. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse number 27. Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Now, the story there is about the situation he got into with that whorish woman and what happened to him, and we'll deal with that a little bit more in a minute. But the verse said, you take fire and you're going to get burned. And I'm preaching on the subject this morning, playing with fire. Playing with fire. Fire is a fascinating thing. It's amazing. I don't think they even know exactly what it is by definition. But we've all heard stories, tragic stories of people playing around with fire, something blew up on them or something, caught them on fire. That, that, that big Chicago fire of uh, 1871 was caused just, they said, by a cow kicked over a lamp, uh, a lantern, and caught hay on fire in the barn and burnt four miles of Chicago long and a mile wide leveled almost the whole city. Fire is something that out of control man cannot handle. Now the fire on earth this morning is only a picture of what I'm gonna preach about this morning. There are three types of fire in the Bible and that is my subject today. All these types of fire in the Bible are, you can't see them with your naked eye, but they burn. And the fire that we do see, it shows us what they're like. Number one, there is in the Bible, give it down just a hair, please. There is in the Bible what we call holy fire. Holy fire. That's a fire that comes out from the presence of God and is usually the judgment of God on sin and righteousness. And that fire is real. In Job chapter 1 and verse 16, that's the fire that came down when the runner come in and said, the fire of God has fallen and burned up the cattle and, and the sheep and so forth and, and so on and burned up and consumed them, the Bible said. It's that fire in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 2 when Moses stood there and looked at that bush and the bush was on fire, that was the fire of God, holy fire and that was in, in there in all the land of Egypt. Uh, in Exodus chapter 9 and verse 24, when the Bible said when the judgments of God was coming on Egypt, fire and hail run along the ground, little, little streaks of fire here and there. It's there in Genesis chapter 19 and verse 24, when the Bible said that the uh, men of Sodom had, had gotten so wicked that the Bible said the Lord rained fire and brimstone from heaven upon Sodom and Gomorrah. That's a far cry from the God they want you to try to believe, uh, they try to get you to believe in and see in our generation today. The God that our generation likes to portray is just one big kiss up in the sky, smiling at everybody and everything. The God of the Bible rained fire, like rain falling yesterday, fire falling out of the sky. The same fire in Numbers chapter 16 and verse 35 
when the Bible said there was Nathan, uh, Dathan and Abiram, those false men with Korah, the false prophet there, in number 1635, the Bible said the fire of the Lord came out and consumed 250 of those men. It's also mentioned in Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 1 where Nadab and Abihu offered strange fire, wasn't the real thing, before the Lord and the fire from the Lord came and devoured them. It's in Luke chapter 17 and verse 29 where the Lord rained fire and brimstone according to God's instruction. Now that strange fire was somebody offering up something to sacrifice that he had not Dictate. In other words, you know what that strange fire is? It's for people that say, it really don't matter what you believe or what religion you belong to, just as long as you worship somehow or another. That's strange fire. Uh, worshiping twiddling beads and walking a labyrinth and having Christian yoga and, and meditate and rock music on the platform and uh, in, in churches and, and swaying and dancing and stuff is all a picture of what we call strange fire. It is that fire that will eventually destroy God's enemies. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 9, after the millennium, when Satan is loose from his thousand year penitentiary sentence and he comes out and gathers all the nations of the world together one last time to try to overthrow God, the Bible said fire will come down from heaven and devour all those enemies. It's that same fire in 2 Peter 3.10 that will literally roast and melt this earth one day. The Bible said that the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. That's God's plan for the future, brother, and the environment. He's going to burn it completely up and make a new one wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's what the Bible calls holy fire. There's a second fire in the Bible, and I want to deal with that for a minute this morning, and that is human fire. Human fire is the fire that burns in the heart of every man, woman, boy or girl in this world. And that is the fire of, of desire, of jealousy, of the burning jealousy or and especially in lust. And our sexual desires and our sexual tra uh, uh, attraction, the Bible calls that a fire. It's a fire that humans have burning within them. In Hosea chapter 7 and verse 4, the Bible said those adulterers were hot and burnt like an oven heated. That's just like a bunch of people in wickedness and sin. Like Hollywood, like, like uh, most big cities, like a dance, like a, like a, a sporting event or a, a, a concert or something. Like burning like an oven, the lust inside of them. In Hosea chapter 7 and verse 7, the Bible said that they were as hot as an oven. And to this day, people say, wow, she's hot. Wow, he's hot. You know, that they're talking about that fire of burn and lust in them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 9, that's what the Bible meant when it said it's better to marry than to what? Burn. It's talking about that sexual lust. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 27, the Bible said that there were the same sex attraction. Women with women and men. The Bible said the men burned like a fire in their lust one toward another. It matters not what you think about it. Your opinion means absolute nothing beside the infallible, inerrant word of the living God. God never intended for people to let their lust burn out of control. You hear me this morning? Uh, uh, it's, it's a terrible, terrible day that we live in. And the Bible said those people the, who let their lust burn out of control, they received in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. That means they had a payday, recompense, 
recompensate, recompensate, I'll pay you back. They recompense. They got their payment for what they had done wrong. I want to say we need it in the story of David there when he walked out on the roof that, that day and he saw that woman taking a, a bath and, and he burned with lust toward her and had her brought to him. And you see the price that David paid for that in the loss of his son and then the loss of other children throughout his life. It's that fire, human fire, that caused Amnon uh, to rape his half-sister Tamar. It's that fire that caused the men of Sodom uh, to, to beat on the doors wanting to rape two angels that came to Sodom at evening. There's, there's no limit to how low and how wicked the human heart will get when it's inflamed with this kind, what we call human fire. Pornography is throwing gas on that fire. Many men say, well, I'll just look at this dirty movie and stuff. That'll satisfy my desire. That don't satisfy it. It makes it worse. That's like throwing gas on a fire. I'm going to tell you this morning, Hollywood makes you think it's all right. The world makes you think it's normal and natural, but you've got a fire burning in you this morning. If you don't control it, it will absolutely destroy your life and take everything you've got away from you. I, I was looking at the fireplace one day uh, and then uh, years ago and I was praying about the youth rally and the Lord gave me this. I know he did. I was looking at the fireplace and I was talking about young people and getting their lives all messed up. And the Lord said, you see that fireplace? Not in an audible voice, but he's speaking to me. And I said, yes, sir, I do. And he said, you see that fire? And I said, yes, I do. He said, that fire brings warmth. That fire brings heat. That fire brings comfort. It's pleasant. It's soothing. It's relaxing to this room in that fireplace. He said, out of that fireplace, it gets on the bed. It gets in the walls. It gets in the ceiling. It will absolutely burn everything here up. And you know what the Lord showed me? He said, that's what human fire is like. All you young men listen to me this morning. Are you listening to me real close? You have a fire burning inside you. You young ladies, you have the same fire burning inside you. God has made a fireplace for that fire. It's called marriage. Inside that fireplace, it's wonderful, it's great, it brings comfort, it brings light and heat and is very comforting. Outside of that fireplace, it'll take everything you've got away from you. There are thousands of men sitting in prison cells right now who didn't take heed to what I just said. They looked at pornography. They looked as though, oh, it won't hurt me. I'm just looking at it. And went right in the fire burned out of control and they raped a 10 or 11 or 12 year old kid and now they're in prison for it. Every serial killer that we've ever seen in this country, in this nation looked at pornography. Every one of them. It will destroy you. It will ruin you. It is gas on the fire. Pictures on your phone. Pictures on your TV. Why do you think God told ladies to dress modest? Listen, brother, you can't take a bunch of 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids that have a burning fire in them and throw them in a college dorm and not expect to not have hell on earth. There's thousands of girls get pregnant every week in America. Too many young girls wind up having abortions. Too many kids wind up with no home because of human fire. Too many wedding bands are snapped because somebody didn't control human fire. Too many divorce lawyers are getting richer every week because people won't control human fire. And many families ripped apart because of human fire, all because people played with fire. If you play with fire, the old saying is, you're going to get burned. There are many a man sitting in a jail cell this morning to give anything in this world if he could turn back time because he let that human fire burn out of control. But there's a third fire in the Bible this morning. 
First, there's holy fire. Don't play with it. Church is serious. Worshiping God is serious. Listen, you don't think I take this serious? You got another thing coming, buddy. I ain't the best preacher in the world. I ain't the best preacher. But listen, there ain't nobody ever took it no more serious than I'm taking it. I take my job serious. This is a scary place that I'm standing in here this morning. I don't mess with holy fire. Don't play with human fire. It'll ruin your life. Don't mess with it. Uh, you cannot mess with it. It'll destroy your life. There's a third one. And that is hell fire. The Bible, we can't see it today. But the Bible talks over 50 times about hell fire. It teaches it in the Hebrew. It teaches it in the Greek. And it teaches it, most importantly, in the English. The Bible teaches from one end to the other. There is a place called hell. It does not matter what some scientist or theologian or doctor or smart mouth atheist over at the bar last night or some two-bit comedian trying to make a living stand in front of a bunch of bricks told you uh, on TV uh, that the Bible declares there's a hell. Matthew chapter 13 verse 42. He said, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Mark chapter 9 and verse 43. You'd be better off to cut your hand off than to have two hands to go into hell, definition, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Matthew 18, 9. If you eye offend you, same thing. It's smokestacks are volcanoes. When you see a volcano, it's hell erupting and spewing, confirming exactly what the Bible says. It's lava is exploding with no bottom. Science confirms, and I don't need science to tell me. I've got the Bible to tell me. But they tell us that the crust of the earth, most places will in 15 miles, some less, some more. Solid rock, the crust of this earth. And inside the center of this earth, it's on fire. And it's so hot, and that's what a volcano is. An earthquake is the heaving and jerking back and forth of hell. 15 miles. It's closer to hell from right here than it is to Hickory. You're closer to hell than your hickory today in this church this morning. The pitiful, pitiful, lame, ridiculous, unscriptural, unscientific, atheistic joke that hell is the grave would be laughable if it wasn't so tragic. Matthew 10, 28 said that he's able to destroy both. You know what Matthew 10, 28 said? He said, don't fear somebody that can just kill your body, but after that have no more that can do. That proves right there it ain't, ain't the grave. See, if, 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 if hell's the grave, all you have to worry about is somebody that can kill you because you're just going to the grave and that'll be the end of it. He said, don't worry about people just kill this body. He said, you better be scared of somebody, God, that can throw your soul in hell after your body's dead. You know what he said in Revelation? Let me tell you what he said in the book of Revelation over there uh, when the word of God gives us his scriptures over in Revelation chapter 20. It said death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. You say now, Brother Danny, where's the lake of fire? It's the sun. That's one. I don't know if that'll wind up being the lake of fire. It might be. That's what it is. That's what it is. So science has now confirmed there's a hell below us and there is a lake of fire. There's big, you seen them big 
lava, it's just moving all the time and liquid stuff spewing out all over the sun, them solar flares and stuff. Now the Bible said that God's going to take death and hell, hell the grave, he's going to throw all them graves in the lake of fire. Hell's not the grave. Hell is a place. The world affirms it constantly. Out there in the world, all you hear, go to hell. You go to hell. Tell them to go to hell. I don't care. They say it all the time, subconsciously. They know there's something down there waiting on people. The world subconsciously knows there's a reckoning after the, there's some kind of settling up time. They all say, I hope he rots in hell. I'll send him on hell. He'll get what's coming to him. That's the way the world thinks. You know, deep, deep down inside, we know there's a payday coming sometime, somehow, somewhere. They say rotten hell. ACDC standing before millions of kids and saying, I'm on the highway to hell. And the song said, no stop sign, speed limits. Nobody's going to slow me down. I've got my wheels. I'm going to spin it. Nobody's going to mess me around. Hey, Satan. I paid my dues. I'm playing in a rocking band. Hey, mama, look at me. I'm on my way to the promised land. I'm on the highway to hell. And kids by these thousands overdosing, following them, dying without God, and wake up in hell with never another chance to get out and never able to come to church again like you are this morning. See, in hell, my friend, is a rock song. Metallica. The old song they used to sing, come and follow me and jump in the fire. Comedians, movies, cartoons, pitiful. Shave people's in. If you don't want to play. If you're here this morning and you don't know you're saved, you're playing with fire, buddy. You're messing around with your never dying soul. Listen, I wouldn't care if everybody in Burke County stood here and laughed at me if I thought I'd get my soul saved from hell fire or I'd be down here begging God don't quit worrying about what people think you ain't that important nobody's going to care when you're dead nobody ain't going to care listen buddy get it settled get it settled this morning young person get it settled this morning bus kid get it settled this morning visitor get it settled this morning church member settle it today settle it today I'm going to tell you a story they said the worst fire disaster in, in history, possibly up until 9-11. Many of you don't even know about this, but it was at a church, supposed church. It was actually a Jesuit Catholic church in Santiago, Chile. December the 8th. 1863, they were having a month-long celebration for Christmas. They named it something in honor of the Virgin Mary that they worshipped. And they were literally, this was the last night of the celebration. It's on the record book. You can, you can look it up. You can Google it. Church fire, Santiago, Chile. December the 8th, 1863. They said that the place was decorated like they had never seen it before. Thousands of yards of greenery, tinsel, and decorations were over that humongous. See, they had 3,000 people in it. Many times bigger than this auditorium here. 3,000 people packed into the walls. Packed into the aisles, up against the walls, standing around the altar. They had all the stuff hanging from the ceiling. They had over 2,000 candles, long, tall candles lit, obviously, before, before electricity. And they lit that plate and they had lanterns, thousands of lamp, oil lamp lanterns hanging around that humongous auditorium. As the service started that day, they said that one of them candles just sort of leaned over just a little bit and caught on some of that tinsel and decoration. 
When it did that fire, got across that stuff and caught and went across and started going up into the ceiling and the rafters. They had locked the other entrances in the, of the building except for the main entrance that night. People began to scream. All of a sudden, the whole building was illuminated by those thousands of candles and those giant pillars in that building. It was unbelievable. In less than three minutes, it was an inferno inside that building like a big furnace. People began to scream, terror-stricken people. as they said as those lamps would fall and sprinkle that hot oil on those people and that fire would hit them. And they'd be running into each other with fire coming out of their back and out of their neck. They said they begin to scream. They said it's impossible to exaggerate the horror of that scene. They said it cannot be described. People begin to scream and push toward that one door. After so many people got packed up against that door, you couldn't get out. And that night, 2,500 people burned to death in a church. People say, well, I, just, I believe God's too good to let anybody burn. He let them. He already did it. You got the wrong idea of God, buddy. I tell you how good God is. He let his son die on the cross to keep you from going there. Now look, it ain't my fault if this building catches on fire. But it's my fault if I don't run out the door. It ain't your fault you was born into this mess in this world. But it is your fault if you don't take God's way out. The remedy. They said people screamed. Hundreds of human forms. Hundreds, they said, was in that big old auditorium with their faces turned upward like they was trying to pray to the one that they were fixing to meet in a few seconds. Mothers were grabbing their babies and trying to shield them from the flames already blistering their arms. Children were clinging in frenzy to those who would have died for them but could only die with them. The entire floor of that church was on fire. Hellfire. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. If you're here this morning, I'm telling you, hellfire ain't nothing to mess with, buddy. Hellfire ain't nothing to mess with. You say, well, Brother Danny, I don't think, what, what are you going to do when you find out and you die and you find out it's real and you can't get out? And you beg God and it's too late. It's too late. That's why you got to get saved on this side of the grave. There ain't no praying for people after they're gone, y'all. When you're gone, you're done. You're done. Your eternal destiny is fixed before you leave here. I'm telling you. Playing with fire. Get you in trouble. Come down the road one night. Me and my cousin coming down. I've been in revival. I was coming down from Marion, coming down to, toward Nebo, turn off where I live. And we looked over in the field, and there was a car upside down in the creek, and there was workers trying to, trying to uh, get, it, get, out of, get the person out of whoever. And I said, oh, man, I said, that don't look good, man. Somebody's probably dead there. And the following Monday morning, I went uptown, and my friend was working in the auto parts store, and we're across the street from the church up there, and I went into the store and said, What's going on? He, he said, man, did you hear about that guy getting killed Saturday night down here on 70? I said, I seen that. I seen that wreck. I said, what happened? He said, that old boy, he said, he was in the auto parts store that day on Saturday. And he said, he when he, he's in the auto parts store, and you know how old boy's got out, and he's working on that old car, and he bought him something. He's heading out the door, and somebody said, hey, where are you headed? And he turned around and laughed and said, hell, if I don't do better, and went out the door. Last thing he saw, heard him say. About eight hours. He's there now. If you don't get out, if you don't get out, you say, Preacher, don't you know the 
think this world thinks that you're crazy for believing. Yeah, they do. We're going to find out, ain't we? We're going to find out who's crazy. I'm standing on a book that ain't never been proved wrong once. That was here before all the other books, and it'll be here when the rest of them's gone. I wouldn't take my chances against that book if I was you. Play it. Fire. I stand. Nobody's talking. Nobody's moving. Please. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. They're coming to play a song this morning. I want to ask you a question. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And my question this morning to every person in this room, you might be a, you might be a preacher or a deacon or a Sunday school teacher or, or a community leader. Or, it don't matter. My question to every person in this room, if you died Today, you ready to meet God? Don't play with fire. I'm going to pray and then she's going to play softly. We'll not sing. If God is dealing with your heart, and you say, Preacher, I need prayer. I don't want to go to hell, Preacher. Or, Preacher, I played with human fire or holy fire. Preacher, please pray for me. Would you let me pray for you this morning? Let's slip it up your hand. Take it right back down. God bless you. God bless you. Hands all over the building. Thank you. Thank you. Hands all over the building. Let's do something about it today. You made the first step. Let's do something about it today. Christians, pray. Father, I ask you right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, do a work in somebody's heart that only you can do. God, do the work, I pray in Jesus' name.